Good evening, and it's the Haunted Antiques Paranormal Research Centre page. And tonight I'm speaking to Richard Case. How are you doing, Richard? I'm very good, Jacqueline. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me on this evening. No, it's great to speak to you. I was really looking forward to it. So we're just waiting for one or two to come on because it takes well, a minute or so for it to sure. catch yeah. up on to the live. So um, what do you think about Paranormal then? Where did it all first start for you? Well, it kind of started really back when I was a small child. Um, I used to go and stay at my great uncle's house and um, he, he kept the bedroom exactly as his wife would have liked it when they were when when she was alive because he was devastated when she died and as a child i always used to sleep in the front room we slept in that room and um i went to bed first as a young kid and i used to feel really really sort of um a little bit nervous but not not in a like something was going to harm me but i just felt like I, any minute i'm going to see my auntie you know um yeah. my great aunt is going to appear in front of me and every time i go to bed i'm going to see her and my great uncle said to me well if you do see her you know, there's nothing to worry about. It's your great aunt. But as a child, I said, well, I don't particularly want to see her, you know. Um, and <laughs> I, I, I used to go to bed and I used to have the, the, the covers right up and, and, and try and cover up so I didn't see anything. And then also I used to go to my granddad's farm, which is down in Dorset, and it's right near this massive manor house in Dorset. And the, the manor house used to be, you could see it outside the window. Um, as a child, I used to stay there and i could look out the window and see the manor house and they used to tell me about oh sometimes at night you may hear the the horse's footsteps of the the phantom you know highwayman or someone like that and uh -huh. blow me down as a child maybe it's imagination i used to hear the, the 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 galloping of a horse going by and it was quite late at night so i used to kind of look but i never managed to see anything uh -huh. but my granddad my granddad told me about the story that he once saw my grandmother at the top of the stairs in the, in, in the cottage and it's a spiral staircase so I used to go up that spiral staircase hand on eyes thinking I was going to suddenly bump into my my gran you know halfway up the, the staircase so he was a but my gran was more of a storyteller than my uncle and he got me really interested he said um I used to say go on granddad tell me a scary story tell me about ghosts and I think if I to be honest I think he's the one that got me really started and interested Wow, that that's brilliant! It really is. But how how often were you scared? I was very often scared. Um, I lived in um, we lived in an old Victorian house which used to have um, uh, servants. So there were servant bells, and and I could imagine yeah. the servant bells ringing. And when I was a child, I used to go to bed, and I I I don't know why, but I I sensed that there was movement in my mum and dad's bedroom of people moving around um and um that it wasn't the neighbors like it was like people visit in visitation or it was a busy house and, and i could sense this at night in my own imagination so Gosh. i always felt a bit scared going to bed at night and, and darkness i hated darkness i know i think right. richard felix is another one that hates the dark and i hate the dark yeah i do ghost hunt you know it's uh it's strange yeah right? <laughs> there's quite a few actually do ghost hunting who don't like the dark yeah but yeah <laughs> It's an interesting one, isn't it? It is, yeah, yeah. But did you tell your parents, though, about this? Well, yeah. I mean, my mum was more interested in my my um, stepdad because my, my stepfather was very religious, very um, deeply religious. And um, anything, if you talked anything about this kind of thing, it was to do with the devil and it was uh, satanic, you know, even, oh, right. even, you know, even before you could even begin to talk about it. But okay. my but my mother was brought up in the in the country was used to all these stories knew a lot, a lot about the local witchcraft stories so she was very up and she used to listen and she was very interested in what I had to say and that wow that's brilliant do you think that your mum ever sort of picked up on things as well she used to take me to a lady and a funny thing I remember was when we had a little kitten. Um, and she wanted to decide the sex of the kitten. I don't know if you heard that, where they dangle a pendulum above the oh, kitten. Right, okay. And if it goes a certain way, you know, it's a male. If it goes a certain way, you know, it's a female. And I can I can recall her taking me to a lady's house where she had a pendulum and she was trying to work out the uh, sex of the kitten. So I think she must have had some kind of interest. Um, but yeah. um, she never really – she would she would always be kind of – I mean, if I tried to – I used to try and scare my friends. I was I was terrible when I was young. <laughs> um, we did a, 
we did when Elvis died, we did a seance and um, we all shut our eyes. And um, I suddenly had an image and, and a few of them had an image. And I said, can we all write on a piece of paper what we saw? And what frightened everyone was we all put the same thing. We saw Elvis behind um, bars. It was like in a jail. And wow. we all saw his face, you know, and, and we all wrote it down. They said, well, don't do that again. I loved it. You know, I thought, you know, we've got, I've got something here. And, you know, I, I probably scared the, the, the kids to death. And I remember them telling my mum, and my mum was kind of like, woohoo, you know, trying to scare them as well. So <laughs> I think she she had a good sense of humour with it. But, um, yeah, I, I, I guess as a child, I, I, I guess you could call it, whether it was my imagination or whether it was that I was sensitive, I don't, I don't really know. Yeah, and things like that you never do know, but they do say that children are more sensitive. They things. do, they do. And, um, you know, the other thing they say is because obviously we don't have, we've not yet been affected by life, the bills and all the all the worries that come with life that yeah, toll right. heavily down on us. Um, they're, they're more, um, they think things more naturally, imagination's more, um, more wild. So um, where they can imagine, they can also, um, uh, you know, probably pick, maybe pick up things. I always think it's good to have that child in you. Um, I believe yeah. you've got psychology once said there's a parent, adult, and child in all of us. And as long as we uh, keep the child in us um, happy, then then we can't go far wrong. Yeah, I'm definitely the child side of things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Adults boring. What can you say? Um, quick shout out then to Dean Buckley, Anne Ollington Gilbert, Carl Hodgson. I've got home. Thanks. Um, Hi, to Blast, to Angela McCabe, Ames, thanks for watching, I, uh, Tom Abraham, all the way from Sweden. So if anyone's got any questions for Richard, if you just add them to the chat, that'd be brilliant. So um, what are you up to now? Then you do a lot of media, you've been on radio shows, um, well, TV, yeah. various things. I'm, I'm going to probably go back on talk radio a couple of times, Um with James Whale and, and many of the presenters on there, because sometimes I'm called on to give my take on something paranormal or, or just to talk about it in general. I know James Wales has moved to a late slot now, so um, I th hopefully that that's going to be happening. Um, back on BBC, I go on there and talk about folklore and witchcraft history and, and all those kind of things, as well as ghosts. Um, still disciplining myself to write that book. Um, I think <laughs> you know what it's like, Jacqueline. Um, I'm... Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I really need to put my, you know, put my foot down on that. Um, I'm still researching. I mean, what was, obviously, we were all affected by the pandemic. And um, That's right. what was incredible, me and Sarah went around the world and I got all the different cultures and all the different beliefs and ghosts. And um, there's still a lot more that I need to research. And um, we were going to go to Iceland. And I was going to be left alone in a, in a place in Iceland. And you were all, you're all going to see me left alone there. But then the pandemic came along. So um, I kind of breathed a sigh of relief. No, I didn't. And I kind of thought, you know, <laughs> good grief. So, um, yeah, I think I think I want to go back to traveling, want to go back to more research. And um, yeah. and I've got a I've got a little team that I go out with as well, where we we do it for just for the love of it and, and just go out and, and, and investigate and research. That's, that's brilliant. And when you've got like reliable people around you. Yeah. And you sort of trust people more in the paranormal community, don't you? You do. I think, I think, I think you do. And I think um, once you get to know the people around you are trustworthy, then when something does happen, uh, a location, um, you, you know that, that, that there's nobody faking it and there's nothing made up. Um, and, um, you know, it does take time to build that trust. And the, the team I, that I've got, we've been to the same place over and over and over again, just to get to know the place. And, um, you know, the ambience of the building and everything else with the building. And um, we've, we've all learned to kind of get to trust each other and, and believe in each other. So uh, one day when something did come back, I mean, uh, I threw a pen over my shoulder and the pen did come back. That was a yeah. bit, um, that was a bit um, unexplainable. Um, you know, uh, me being the skeptic, I still think it bounced off somewhere, but you know, we, we that remains to be seen, but um, I certainly didn't think any of the, the team threw it, you know, because I, I trust them implicitly. That's right. That really matters. You yeah. know, you, you've got to trust people. But you're also like alone with people in like cold, dark places, aren't you? You Which are. Could be like you miles are. from anywhere. Yeah. In the and, early uh, hours, and you've got to trust people. You have, and I think it's a very much a safety issue. I always say to people on um, online, you know, be very careful. You know, especially people that are new new to the the field and they want to go out with a ghost group. I say, 
don't ever go there alone. You know, if you're a young woman, make sure that you meet up in a safe place and meet up. I and mean, that's probably the old policeman in me. But, you know, I think you've got to say it because the, tr the problem with, as you know, with the paranormal, there's so many groups out there. We sometimes don't know which are the good ones, or which are the bad ones. And, that's you know, we, and there's no governing body at the moment. So um, we just hope that, um, you know, that the, the good ones succeed. Yeah, I'm due to go to Scotland soon and, well, <laughs> pending, obviously. Yeah. You know, yeah, so yeah, I want to meet up with people, but you know, I've got to be careful because I'm on my own, so yeah, yeah, you, you just got to go with what you see and try and make a judgment, uh, yeah, 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 definitely. And, um, I, th I think, um, most um places you go to, I mean, you're, you're pretty good. I mean, I, yeah, I, I find that a lot of these, I guess, are urban explorers, I sometimes say they're probably putting themselves at more risk because sometimes they go in buildings where. You know, there may not just be ghosts. There could be people taking drugs or gangs or, or you know, there, there could be all sorts of risks to the property. So I always say be careful when you are going out because, you know, we were all young once. Um, That's right. You know, um, we all kind of, um, you know, I appealed once, I think as a newspaper, for people to be thoughtful when they go around graveyards. Um, and people kind of misunderstood a little bit of what I said. I mean, I was a young young man myself once and um you know if i suddenly found this um spooky old building i probably would have been just like any young person oh, but i just say you. yeah so i say to young people just be careful you know just be be thoughtful but certainly don't trespass and, and get permission if you can we obviously uh, advocate that yeah that's right it's it's really sort of a critical one at the moment isn't it with like, yeah. so many um doing lives from different places um, we've got Jane Rowley watching, so hi Jane, Donna French, hi, um, Shell Buckley, Lois Haddo, Gary Fields, Shaz Moy, Stephen Daly, hope everyone's all right, hi Sarah Edwards, Phil hi, Newton, everyone. thanks for watching, so if anyone's got any questions, so okay, you say you're a sceptic, so okay, your childhood, you like picked up on things, have you seen anything which you really 100% cannot expect. Yeah, okay, the pen issue was strange, and you think, well, maybe. Yeah. But... Um, there, there are two occasions that happened to me. Um, one occasion I was in a in a guest house, and um, I, I was coming out of sleep, so so straight away I can say um, that could be um, to do with the, the, you know, the, I think it's hypnogomic, when you're waking up from sleep you can hallucinate so it could have been that but i'm not one that's prone to hallucinating when i wake up from sleep so that was interesting and it looked like a, a monk in a in a gown and he put his hand towards the bed and i jumped him on thought somebody was pranking and in the in, in the hotel room um and it and it, i but i still think i can put that down just waking from sleep so that's yeah. why i'm still skeptical on that the other one was um i was at this pub which uh, was quite a modern pub and um we were they were doing a seance and the girl had told me about things that had been seen so already i guess i had it in my mind but i think you'll agree with me what with us investigators have been doing it a long time you know people can tell us things but we're we don't suddenly imagine things we we're, we're used to doing it so you know maybe if we were just starting out we might be more prone to that but i wasn't prone to imagining what i saw you know i i, I definitely saw this this woman was um sat in front of me she was doing the seance and the next minute i saw what looked like a woman on the side going towards the wall and um i said to somebody was there a doorway there and there was a doorway there once apparently because it was an old hotel yeah. and but it was from the corner of the eye again so i am yeah. quite hard i am quite hard on myself and i said well that's okay but it could have been the lights of the cars going by and the rest of it <laughs> my my mind made the picture because psychologically that can happen you know that's um, right a friend of mine, it happened to a friend of mine, he was um, he was in a, doing an investigation. He said to me, i just seen, um, been, seen this ghost go by. And I said, wow. He said, I got, it on, um, I got it on recording. I said, well, be careful announcing anything to the, the people in the location until you're 100% sure. But he jumped. He got really excited about it. And I went <laughs> over to him and I said, um, that's the car lights going by. And he said, oh, it was. But because of the car lights, he had seen the vigor and everything else. So wow. the mind does fill in the blanks. So I'll give you an example. I once saw a woman with a black and white hat and at the corner of my eye, I thought it was a policeman, you know? So yeah. that does happen. It, your mind fills in all the little bits and 
you know, you're kind of loosening. So in answer to that, I've not yet seen a full apparition walk towards me, no corner of the eye, solid as you and I, that I can say except one story. <laughs> yeah. I was in a church and it was two o'clock in the morning and I was with a friend of mine and um, she kept getting the name um, Mary all the time and she never ever picks up anything. She said, okay. I keep getting Mary. I keep getting Mary. I said, well, that's interesting. Suddenly we heard movement out in the graveyard. So I looked out, pitch black the church. Hello? There's a voice. I'm looking for my grave. Now you can imagine someone says, I'm looking for my grave. You jump a mile. And yeah. she said, she said, what's that? I said, well, I don't know. It's a guy looking for his grave. I said, it could be a ghost or, or some, <laughs> some local madman or something, you know. So we opened the gate and there, there was a guy there with an oil painting under his arm. And next door, bless, there's a there's a there's a home for people with dementia and, and Alzheimer's. So I do feel for that because my mum oh, had dementia. Wow, yeah. And we used the toilets there. So I assumed that he'd come out of there. But bear in mind this is two o'clock in the morning. So I walked him back to the to the manor house and I said, What's the painting, my friend? He said, Oh, that's that's the Virgin Mary. I, I carry this photo, this picture with me every time I go to the graveyard. Oh wow. And she had had the name Mary. So that made me think. Yeah. But when we got to the house, the, the ladies opened the door and they almost wanted to say to us, um, do you want to use a toilet? And it was like he went past and went up the stairs. And when they shut the door, I said to the woman, I said, I, they didn't even seem startled that he was out two o'clock in the morning. They didn't seem, didn't seem to acknowledge him. So to this day, I don't know if I had seen a, a ghost, you know, um, wow. because I've heard stories of um, ghosts that, that can be you, like you and I. They can form just, just as a person. Um, and um, you can talk, have a conversation with them. So, who knows? That might have been my first ghost. And um, gosh, yeah, yeah, interesting story though that is. And um, so, I've got a question from Lois Hadley then. Um, who inspires you in the paranormal world? Which person? There are people? many, many that inspire me. Um, funnily enough, Chris French, Professor Chris French, inspires me because he's. Um, does a nominalistic psychology, which he's more of a skeptic on things and quite yeah. hard to kind of convince of anything paranormal. So I don't know if he would class himself as the paranormal world. Kel Cooper, Dr. Kel Cooper. Um, yeah, he's, he's amazing. Yeah, he's I've spoken awesome. to Kel. Richard Felix. Um, yeah. And um, I would say Kieran O'Keefe. Uh, Kieran O'Keefe is my mentor. Um, yeah. He's kind of got me interested in parapsychology. And, um, but funny enough, you know, that's a good question because you, you then go back to things like Harry Price, Elliot O'Donnell. I know Harry Price is a bit of a showman, but the old ghost hunters, you know, they inspire me as well. So, yeah, um, yeah there's quite a lot. But um, I don't tend to go for the TV ones, though, the, the ones that are mainly on TV. I know Kieran was on on a certain yeah, show, but I don't – Yeah, well, so is Richard, but it's different, yeah, isn't it? It is. Yeah, because they sort of stick to their own – you know what they do like Richard obviously is his story and yeah, yeah. so a quick uh, shout out to Jay Mortimer um Stephen Daly says Richard is a very clever man thank you Stephen <laughs> um, and, and, and him and he is as well so. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. so Shell Buckley says um if you were a skeptic what's your thoughts on mediumship yeah um I actually have a lot of friends that are, that are mediums, and um, I, when I say I'm a skeptic, I, I'm more skeptical about. I, I believe that a lot of things can be explained. I believe paranormal activity is quite rare, except for things like mediumship, because I believe there are people that are actually born with this disability that we need to we need to investigate further. And I think people are investigating it more and more. Um, and um, I, I, I. I've had mediums that have been very good. They've given me very accurate readings. They've told me things. Um, I'm a little bit of a tester. I don't do it in a nasty way, but <laughs> I, I went to visit one deliberately for research, and um, I then told her afterwards that I am a researcher, and um, she did kick me in the leg. No, she didn't. And, and I told her that, and she smiled and, and took it. And I said, I didn't want to tell you because that would have, you know, you know I don't believe in doing that. No, mediumship, I, I, I have utmost respect for mediums. One of my... Um, one guy that I really looked up to a lot was um, 
Derek Acora. I mean, um, I know Gwen. I know Gwen very well, and um, I know Derek was the typical showman, and he you know was, that that yeah. that was part of his personality, and he could brighten everyone's day. You know, he was a medium that had that gift to be a showman. And I know there are times when maybe he got it wrong, but, you know, I know that happens to mediums. I've seen that happen. And when they're put under extreme pressure, it can happen. But no, I, I, I wouldn't say that I disbelieve that they haven't got something. I, I think the, the question is whether they're the only people that can maybe see things and pick things up. And the rest of us, we, we, we probably take us along. Maybe I never will see a ghost or unless it was that ghost I saw with the painting that time, you know. Yeah. So when you you go out and investigate then, so do you use any specific tools? I don't myself because I go out as the ghost challenger. I mean, I did that many, well, a year ago. Um, I was uh, um, Clan Kayak Four Manor. i got to say that right. It's Welsh, isn't it? Um, yeah. And I was left there completely on my own. And as the ghost challenger, I take the challenge as a skeptic. I say to somebody, find me a haunted building. I'll go there on my own and you can watch me live and I'll see what happens. That's and cool. I don't use, and I don't use gadgets. I just go back to the old fashioned ghost hunting, just have a lantern and, and just look round. When I go out with a group of people, they use gadgets and um, I'm not a fan of them. If I'm honest yeah. with you, um, I really find that, you know, sometimes people get excited by all these gadgets and sometimes it can spoil the event. I find that sitting quietly and listening and, and, and observing and just having a recorder with you and a, 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 a camera or something like that, you know, voice recorder, that, that to me is enough to sometimes capture things. Yeah. But um, there again, I don't, I don't dis dislike it. And sometimes I will go back to the gadgets. It's funny before you, we, we came on, we were talking about, um, cat balls kitten balls and yeah, um, that's right. <laughs> i'm a skeptic with what's making them go off and and things like that but i think you agree with me jacqueline that on our own we sometimes have done little experiments and and sometimes they do baffle you i mean i remember doing one in this house saying you know is anyone there and, and it was going off and it going off it seems to like every possible question and then when i hadn't questioned it for all it's off so you know what's going on there sometimes you know so yeah. um i don't i don't completely say that it's not that, that, that it's nothing going on but um i do prefer it the old-fashioned way yeah but you just try and uh, rule everything out don't you you do yeah and yeah. then like i never say anything's paranormal really yeah i just say that i can't explain it but you don't know what it is you know exactly exactly it's um it's strange thing i mean the, the one thing that happened to me was um and somebody said it to me, what's, yeah, you're a skeptic, but what was the one thing that almost made you say, no, I'm not a skeptic? And it was a personal thing to me. And I think often it is personal to each family. Um, my father-in-law died and um, he didn't leave a will and because he didn't believe he was, you know, Sarah's the only daughter, it'll all be sorted out. So there wasn't a problem. You didn't need to leave a will. Um, and uh, basically, um, I remember just one night just saying, oh, we got to sort all this out, Ken, just, you know, because we had to ring this person, that person. I said, oh, I don't know, we got to ring him. And he used to be a joker about my ghost hunting. And suddenly my phone's ringing Bristol Crematorium and I picked it up and Siri wasn't on. I hadn't called the crematorium, but it was phoning it. And I laughed to myself and thought, that's the kind of joke Ken would have with me. He'd turn around and say, well, I'm not here now. You better call the crematorium. That's how oh, it wow. was. And um, it, it, it was a very strange occurrence. And um, I think... Dr. Cal Cooper does that telephone calls from the dead. So it was kind of one of those kind of scenarios, which was kind of interesting. That, that's brilliant. Yeah. Um, it also works where you use a phone and you can actually phone another mobile. Yeah. yeah. And people have actually had results with that as well. Yeah. So, yeah, that's an interesting one. I've actually witnessed that firsthand. As, do, and, do you find, Jacqueline, that the more you do this, though, the more you tend to, not that you're picking up things, but the more you get contacted about ghosts like your friends are pro a it's because they know you're you're in the paranormal i don't know but more the most of my friends before never saw ghosts but now they know what i do they've got yeah. this going on that going on and i joke and say well they, that's because they know i've been in your home and you know i'm gonna you know that i do find there is a lot of activity that happens the more you're in it you know the more you've been with yeah. it um i'm not sure why why that is sometimes but um you know some would say we're, we're picking it you know getting we're getting more into it and we're picking it up, but there's never an answer to all that. You know, it's a very, yeah. Different... That's one thing I've wondered. Like yeah. you take photos, I've taken thousands and thousands of photos. So then why haven't I got something in it? 
Yeah. And then I, you know, I go to a location, I take three photos at the same point, and then there is something I may have captured, which I haven't debunked yet, at Warwick Castle. Yeah. But it's just, well, why haven't I got something in these photos? The other I ones, it's I, odd. I, I, because I thought on that, I thought, is it because I wasn't looking then, you know? And I've gone back on old photos sometimes at places, and I've realised that, no, it isn't. I'm looking now with the eye that I've got now, and I still can't find anything. But when yeah. I've gone to these haunted locations, I have found these 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 anomalies. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan of orbs, as, you know, orbs has no. explained. <laughs> But um, you do get strange, you know, strange shadows, strange things. I mean, the, right. the, in, the interesting thing is lights that you sometimes see when you're out. You can see a, a strobe of light through the, you know, float around you or like, um, you know, it's uh, we had a flash of light in a location. It was like the flash bulb had gone off in the in wow. the area and it was pitch black. And I went straight outside to see if there's anyone yeah. doing around and it was heavy rain. There was no one around. So, you know, all these things are strange. Yeah. Yeah, it's just brilliant, isn't it? I just love it, I really do. I've got Jane Mortimer watching. So a quick question then from Jane Mortimer. So you said about live streaming when investigating. As a sceptic, how can you have full concentration on an investigation while sharing social media? <laughs> She's a good point. Yeah, um, that's it. What I would say, Jane, is the ghost challenger is my tongue-in-cheek bit of fun, okay? When I do that, that's my one thing I do where um, I like to give back to the public and, and just have a bit of fun and do a live event. Um, my serious research when I'm a skeptic is what I'm doing by collecting the, the ghost stories around the world and comparing them and also by uh, research that I do, and that I do separate to what I do when I'm out um, with a camera by me. And I do agree with you. It's very difficult to um, to give a very um, good uh, investigation when you've got a camera stuck in your face, as Jacqueline would probably agree with. You know, yeah. um, it, it's. I think that's the thing. We need to take those things like a pinch of salt sometimes. You know, um, I often say to people, you may see things when I'm there and we can look at it and record it. So we may capture things. But um, no, I never look at that as a serious research when I'm doing that. I always look at that as you know, uh, a bit of fun that people can follow me, watch me live, see if I get scared or hopefully I <laughs> jump out of my wits and, and things like that. Um, but my research is, is completely different to that. That's cool. Do you jump out your wits then? Yeah, I have. <laughs> yeah, skew it in, skew it in. Um, I was oh, in the right, okay. Yeah, well, the funny thing is when I was a young teenager, um, my parents were away and I was a naughty boy as a teenager. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> as a teenager. And I, I can remember they, my, my stepfather was very religious and alcohol was taboo. So as soon as they went on holiday, you know, natural teenager, right, get down the off license, yeah. got all the booze, going to have a party, you know, invite everyone round. We're going to have a real good time. <laughs> and I can remember I was home and suddenly I had this boom, boom, boom coming upstairs. And I held my bedroom door because I thought it, this is leaning on the door. I said, go away, go away, thinking it was – my brothers and my sisters that had come to the house, opened the door, there was no one there. Now, years later, I was in the Skirred Inn, and this is when I'm, you know, doing my ghost challenger, and it was the only night I didn't feel right in the Skirred Inn. And it okay. felt a little bit like when I was that teenager, there was an atmosphere. Yeah. And I remember being in the Skirred Inn, and suddenly I heard the boom, 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 boom coming up the stairs, yeah. and like something pushed the door, held the door. I turned the light on, and I didn't. I turned off my camera, and I said, I'm not investigating for the rest of the night. And people saw that happen. So, um, yeah, I was scared then. I mean, I think, I think you've got to be in the right frame of mind. And if you're doing it on your own, you've got to be so careful. And um, I guess um, I wasn't in the right frame of mind at that time. So, uh, yeah. Worry. Yeah. It's certainly an interesting location with loads of history. I've oh, it's lovely. It's and, lovely. Yeah. 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 Uh, we've got some really amazing EVPs from it and stuff. And um, a strange issue with the REM pod as well. It just wouldn't stop going off. Yeah. And then you change the batteries and then it's still behaving really crazily. But then yeah. you sort of moved it and it behaves somewhere else properly. So I don't know. Yeah, there's been a lot of those occurrences, I think, down at the Skirid. It's, uh, it's, uh, and the one that the funny thing is, like, I know a group that, or somebody went there and said, well, I've been there, it's not haunted. And I said, well, how, how many times have you been there? They said, once. I said, yeah. well, you know, how can you say something isn't affected? I mean, I know um, a great friend of mine, I can't think of his name now, he'll, he'll, uh, he'll <laughs> kick, kick me for that, but he doesn't actually believe in places that places are haunted. He believes everywhere's haunted. Um, I believe that. Which is an interesting concept, you know. Um, he believes that you don't need to go to the Ram Inn, you don't need to go to 
in this particular place, you know, you can pick up things wherever you go and everywhere it's haunted. So the thing I don't believe is, one I find hard to believe is most haunted, the phrase most haunted. It's not, yes. a, dig at the, not a dig at the show. Yeah. But when they yeah, say yeah. this is the most haunted place there is, you know, I think to myself, well, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm sure that, you know, it's just that they've got a lot of activity at that base. It doesn't mean that that isn't the, the most haunted place. I mean, I went to Alcatraz um, wow, and awesome. I spent time alone. They allowed me to spend time alone in the, the cell and nothing happened, you know? Yeah. You know, when you see TV or you hear the story, not, not just the television, but from the, yeah. the, the guards there, things are happening all the time. But when I was there at that particular moment, nothing happened. So, you know. Yeah. It can also depend on a lot of things, can't it? You can. know, like, yeah. say you get one group and the person's just going for a lap or something. Yeah. Then you know it just might kill it for other people sometimes. Well, I've done talks and I've also done um, events where we've raised money for charity and we've taken the old um, hen night or the the, the old um, yeah <laughs> made the mistake of doing those sometimes, which, right. which is good fun. But you know, yeah, um, you never tend to get much going on then. It's uh, it's usually one of them throwing the the object and and having a laugh and trying to convince you. I tend to put them on their own then in the most haunted place in the board. I'm saying that word now. I tend to put them in the <laughs> haunted place just on their own or something just to get them back. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Oh, they'll just tap somebody on the shoulder, won't they? You know? Yeah. <laughs> Things like that. Um, so I've got a question here from Lois Haddo again. Um, what's the best ghost challenge which you have done? Um, oh, the, the best ghost challenge I've done... Um, I would say, even though I've been all around the world and done some challenges there, believe it or not, I would stay Station Hotel Dudley. Wow, okay. Um, that was the most... I uh, the, the, the story is that the, the girl was buried in the barrels. I think it's the, the right story where she was murdered and put in one of the, the barrels. And when I was there, I heard what sounded like dragging when I was down in that oh, cellar wow. on my own. And I could hear it, and it was very dark, very eerie. And that was the most challenging. So I would say probably the most challenging. Um, as for best, I mean, I'm going to say Alcatraz. I'm going to say all those places because that's right, because, yeah. Because they're on your bucket list. Um, but if I'm going to be honest, I would say back in the UK is some of the some of the places here have been the, you know, they've been the most um, the most active. I found um, you know great you know great places. Oh wow! Um, Gary Fields says. Um, he loves it when you can feel the atmosphere change in a room. Have yeah. you experienced that? Very much so. Um, I've been in a in a place where you've gone in, and you feel like um, it's a doddle. There's nothing to you know, nothing to fear. It feels really homely. You could fall asleep in the place, and then for that next moment, you get this really uneasy feeling, and, and it gets it seems to you to get darker. I don't know why that is. Maybe that's psychology. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah, and. Definitely. Um, it, it it it's then that you get something moving, some noises. It's very very faint, and then it's gone again. You know, but I I, I have had that yes, where the atmosphere changes, and you know it, it's there's one place we did Arnesville, not Arnesville, Honors Hotel, Honors Manor Hotel in in Bristol, and um, they got the story of the nun that was buried in 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 the in the in the building. But there's always these stories. They're like urban myths. I mean, there is a truth. That it's true they found a body, but still a bit out if it was a nun and if the story's true but when i was there um i went with the writer who was writing a book about it at the time and before that i'd gone up to the fire exit up to the top back where the nun had been seen and when i played um this old music one of the the firelights just flashed on flashed off and it all went cold and and and, and stifling so i took him up there on the off chance this might happen again and I had been there before, mind, with other people, and nothing happened. So it's not not a fault with the light. And yeah. apparently, it was very it is very unlikely to happen. I checked the electrician, and I was with this writer, and, and it did happen then. So when I say I'm a skeptic, what is going on then? You know, the thing that I'm quite interested in is a thing called psychokinesis, and 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 the power that sometimes we have to do things and move things, the yeah. influence we can have on things, because that's something that um, science has took a little bit more seriously is about the power of the mind and, and what what can be done so i wonder often if you know it's us that are haunting ourselves are we making these things happen you know that um there is a good one where um somebody had a bucket with a a glass in the bucket and they all concentrated on the glass of the bucket and the glass shattered you know 
Um, yeah. So that's that's an experiment I'd advise. Be careful with it. But um, if any that of you groups cool. want to go anywhere, take a bucket, put a glass in it, concentrate on the bucket, will it, and see if it, see if it shatters. If it does, then even though that's not maybe a ghost or anything else, then it goes back to this um, psychokinesis and, you know, um, especially with the poltergeist, um, you know, thing. Yeah, I, I was going to mention the poltergeist link. Mm. So basically, you know, a lot of things happening sort of get blamed on poltergeist, but then what of that is actually you sort of causing it through your energy? I went to a house of a, a, a young girl that was probably going through the the, the the menstrual cycle going for all the, yeah. the the angst and that and and this is why i say to people to be very ethical and very careful when you help people in their home i took a woman investigator with us and she was been tormented by um these things going on in her home and uh when we went to the home um you could you could see the book book come off the thing and, and things rattle and things like that but when you the more you talk to her you could see that she's really angry she was really tense about things in the family yeah. And I was told later that as soon as she relaxed and all that went, that the, the whole thing subsided and everything went. So um, yeah. that could be an example of, of where that's happening. Yeah, I've actually had things happen when I'm angry. Yeah, yeah. I've had glasses smash and things like that in a pub. Yeah. I've had quite a few things happen when I've been angry about something in one yeah. specific area. But yeah. But, the... but, but it's paranormal, isn't it? Because it's not yeah. really explained by science. So, um, you know, it's still paranormal. And. You know, I, I think, I mean, I, I love to think it's ghosts that are doing it and that's the, because I like my main field is ghosts. You know, I find it fascinating, but I have to accept that there could be other reasons these things are happening. I think it's um, a very good, um, I forget his name. I'm terrible tonight with names. I'm getting oh, old. So. <laughs> but um, he wrote a book and um, in the book he said, I don't agree with ghost hunters going to places and thinking that it's a ghost or that it's a haunting that's making yeah. these things happen why do we do that why don't we go there and think it could be something else you know and, and it's an interesting thought you know um if things are moving in a building don't automatically assume it's a ghost so i'm going on a little bit i don't want to yeah <laughs> bless you sorry i was trying to sort the dog out as well yeah. snoring. <laughs> <laughs> i just I threw something in that direction <laughs> i think flow flow is um asleep at the moment so <laughs> Yeah, it's getting a bit loud. I thought you don't want the sort of snoring in the background. <laughs> it's a bit much. I, I had that once. Either. I had an audience once, and I did have one of the audience snoring. So that oh, is right. <laughs> That's bad. Oh, dear. Um, Stephen Daly asks, when are you going to Scotland? I'm going to definitely do that, Stephen, as soon as um, everything is settled down and nice and... Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm raring to go, and, and Scotland is the one place that I've not yet been. And it's the one place I, uh, that, that has a, a lot of wonderful places to investigate, so definitely soon. You, you haven't even been there? Well, I have. I've been on holiday. You've been um, on holiday, but yeah. Oh, well, when I saw, I've been on, I mean, I guess I always do a busman's holiday. So when I was there on holiday, there was a little bit, I went out to a field and I could almost imagine um, it was a battlefield and I can imagine the battle going it. on. Yeah. So I did feel that kind of atmosphere, That's but... Cool. Um, but no, I definitely need to go there and do a, do a challenge and things. Oh, that'd be brilliant, yeah. That'd be fantastic. I've got a few people like mentioning about spirits are everywhere and they agree that spirits are everywhere. So Annette yeah. Lark and also Jane Rowley as well. So basically everywhere is haunted spirit around us all the time. Yeah. Um, it's just a theory that like, everybody, say mediums say that you've got the family around you. Yeah. So, you know, you've got the building, you've got the land, you've got objects, or even your family, so... Well, when I did a little article recently, because I did say about people respecting graveyards, it is a big thing of mine. I do believe that graveyards are a no-no as I've got older with, with investigations, um, or, or at least putting items on graves. I find that's a yeah. no-no. Um, but I, I, someone made the mistake of saying to me, well, I don't believe that there's no, haunt, there's no ghosts in graveyards, because that's where you're buried. Well... There is, in fact, haunted graveyards. So there is graveyards that have been that have had have, have had activity and and go seen. Um, and you only got to think up in Scotland of um, is it Greyfriars and, and Greyfriars, those, but, isn't yeah, it? and isn't it? yeah. So definitely there there are times where I just think go in with respect and and do it properly. That's and, right. Yeah, yeah, and certainly keep away from the new ones. You know, it, yeah, because there, there is a lot of history in the graveyard and. 
I've always been fascinated by a lot of the stories and the inscriptions on the graves themselves. Well, I think it. I think the one fascinating thing I do on my talks is about St. Mark's Eve is when they used to wait in the porches um, of the church. And that's April the 24th. They used to look and they used <laughs> to see the, the people that were going to die go past. Um, yeah. So the, the grave diggers would look and they'd say, right, it's going to be him. That's going to be my next, you know. Um, and yeah. I always say to ghost hunters on St. Mark's Eve, which I think is April 24th, go in the porch, you know, get permission or talk to you. You know, don't mess around on the graves, stay away from the graves. But in the porch of a churchyard, that's a tradition that was once upheld by, by many in the church. Yeah, that reminds me of a story I heard at the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, okay, so Annette Lark, what has shook you up the most? Where? Um, Sorry, where? Where has shook me? Oh, hello. Um, so hopefully Richard will come back in a bit. Must be an internet uh, question, um, internet issue. Um, so I hope everyone's all right, and thanks for all your lovely questions. Um, yeah. So I actually went to Whitby at the weekend. Um, absolutely stunning place. Actually got to go up to the Abbey. Oh, he's back. That's good. Because you don't really want to listen to me. So here you go. Welcome that back, Richard. <laughs> I think that shook me up the most when my phone just suddenly went like that. Um, no, I think... And me um, as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think what shook me up the most was probably the Ram Inn. Um, I was alone in the barn of the Ram Inn, and um, uh, I um, I didn't like it. Um, the the Ram Inn is, um, you know, is is well known. I know for for all the things, but um, yeah. we we had a we had a table there, and there was a media medium there, and we had the press there, and suddenly it was as if the 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 table had been thrown. It was like went really with force. Me being a skeptic, kept looking and saying, is it the pressure on it? Is people kicking it? But it did go with real force. And um, I had to walk the lady from the press out to the car because she was so... And that <laughs> did shake me up because I went back in there and I didn't feel... I mean, John, bless him, he was fantastic. Um, you know, old John yeah. the, of the Ram Inn. Um, and Caroline's now taking over. But, um, you know, it's a fantastic place. And, and I think, you know... That is a, that can be quite a scary place, yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, I haven't been yet, so it's a, it's a shame I miss John. But yeah, I would like yeah. to go sometime. Um, I think you've sort of covered this now. Um, it's asked by Shell Buckley. What's your weirdest paranormal experience that you couldn't explain? I think Shell, but uh, that would be the 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 one with the the painting, the oil painting that I said about the guy that yeah. suddenly, you know, that has got to be the weirdest thing I've ever come across um especially that time of morning two o'clock in the morning yes he could have come from the home next door but the fact that they were very good at keeping the residents in at night then i walked him back and they already paid him any attention the reason we didn't go back and look into that was we were too worried we'd get the girls in trouble if he had come out that night because they oh, were so yeah. good we used to give them chocolates because they were so good at they agreed okay. to let us use the toilets and we were we thought well i don't really want to get them in trouble so let's just leave it you know so we um i i do kick myself and wish i'd gone back and found out and i've tried to get the, the place is shut now it's no longer there oh so. that's a shame yeah because yeah. then maybe they experience something yeah you know yeah. Or, or maybe if you mention it some somewhere yeah, I mean the the building. If somebody there, else gets the story, same yeah, story. Yeah, the building's still there, and the uh, the church and all the areas still there. So I'll probably try and find out and look into that. Yeah, well, fingers crossed then that you yeah. can get something else on it. So hi, Wes. We've got Wes Carmen watching. Um, have you been to Canada yet? Yeah, I've been to Canada, um, uh, Nova Scotia. Um, it's a lovely little place I went into Canada, where apparently the bell. If you ring this bell, the bell hadn't been rang. And if you ring it, suddenly this ghost turns up in the belfry and walks wow. around and, and everything. And the person that rings the bell, something bad will happen to that person. So I went into this church in Canada and this, this lovely young man told me about it and said, yeah, you ring the bell and this will happen to you. Uh, I'm not, he said, I'm not touching it. He said, but he said, you can ring it. He said, no one's ever rang it. I said, what, Sh shall I do it? He said, I want you to ring it. Yeah, ring it. Go up there and see what happens to you. So I rang it went upstairs nothing happened so i came downstairs and, and the boy said well thanks for ringing i'll have to keep looking i've been in contact with him since he hasn't seen a ghost since then um but that was there was wonderful places there's all an old pharmacy there where um it's a museum 
uh, I think it's Cosset House, and you go in there, and basically the old pharmacist, uh, they, there was going to be, somebody had left the, uh, the, the vacuum cleaner on, and they said that one of the sparks went, and suddenly where the old pharmacist, the alarm went off, but all the things were sh shaking in the, the, the shelves and everything, and they all said they believe it was the pharmacist that once lived there trying to warn him that there could have been a fire and all his collection could have been burnt. So there was there's wonderful places in Canada and the Canadians are lovely people as, as yeah. well, as is all the world. I mean, you know, I've been to Vietnam everywhere and, you know, and, and, and people all around the world are, are willing to tell you their, their stories. That's brilliant. Fantastic. So Lois Haddo says, what's your opinion on trigger objects from a skeptic point of view? I actually think that if somebody some once lived, I think um, one of the best trigger objects is just music as well, because playing music um, from the war or something like that, I've seen that change the atmosphere. But when you mean trigger objects like, you know, items, um, uh, like a cross and drawing around it and seeing if it moves. Yeah, if it's moved significantly and you know that no one's been in that room, I've not yet come across one that's really convinced me. But if I suddenly saw the cross had moved, considerably a i'd look at the vibration of the building all the other things like if there's traffic yeah. going by and yeah. stuff like that but if i was convinced no one had been in the room then then that would be that would be that would be interesting yeah definitely yeah. but again we go back to the psychokinesis and whether we're moving the objects and all the other things as well so yeah you know, it's just an interesting one though so that's the skeptic excuse for it as well, isn't it? If it doesn't yeah, it is. do that, yeah. we've done it. <laughs> skeptic is a very funny word, you know. Um, the, the new word is scoffer for people that don't believe 100% and just go in to scoff it. There's, they're, they're called scoffers. Um, right. I never be a scoffer, you know. Um, I, I, I've had mediums go out with me and I totally respect them and I'm not there to, to try and catch them out, you know. So... You know, if I ever interview mediums in the future, don't worry. You know, it's it's um, I'm not there to to test you or anything. It's um, you know, I I I believe you believe what you believe and and, and respect and all that. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, Stephen Daly is asking about your bucket list locations. What would your top three allegedly haunted locations be? What you'd like to investigate? He likes. Perf Oh, I can't even pronounce it. Paviglia Island, Paviglia, Loftus Hall, and Chilling Castle. Yeah, I've heard of those. Um, I would probably say, um, I mean, I've done Alcatraz, but I would probably say, um, is it Waverley in um, in the States? Waverley Sanatorium. Yeah, yeah that would be one, one of my big ones. Um, and I, I think the Edinburgh Edinburgh Vault, you know, yeah. um, because I, you know, they're still on my bucket list to do. Um, yeah. definitely um you know it's um but then there's so many because you get over one you get over another and you've got the queen mary you've got all the other ones as well so oh yeah queen mary yeah there's that, quite a lot there's quite a lot yeah but, um, that's still got to be done yeah some awesome places around so it's how you choose isn't it so carl had an interesting experience at morgan winter gardens where he's upstairs alone Stairs at the back of him, and yet something went up these stairs, nobody else in the room. If anybody had come in that room, they would have had to go past him. Uh, that's very, that's very similar to me with the footsteps yeah. coming up into the room. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a very um, well known thing that where you're almost getting like a rushing movement coming towards me, and you can hear the footsteps, and it's like it rushes past you. Um, it, it's almost like, a, a, I guess, a haunting that is in that's repeating what it did when it lived there or in time. You know, maybe yeah. you know there was one where we did um, the the Bristol Old Vic, and um, they know that where a murder was committed, somebody rushed along that area all the time, and sometimes people would be there and they could feel the rush go past them as they were there, where this person used to rush along. So, um, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, that's a that's a well-known um, but incredible experience to have, yeah. Yeah, it is, isn't it? And Angela and the cave, what could it be then? Do you believe in demons? Hi, Angela. Um, I'm, I'm, my family were very religious, um, my, my, my step family. Um, and um, I've also seen the damage that religion has done. And, and that's no disrespect to religious people. I've got a lot of good Christian friends and 
you know, um, uh, and I find that sometimes nominations can do more damage than good. And I, I, I often feel that the demons as demons have been uh, demonized, or <laughs> demons, <laughs> demons yeah. have been used to kind of uh, scare people and and put people off certain things. So, with demons, like the, the the I'm still looking at it. But my great friend Chris McKinnell, who is the grandson of Lorraine yeah. and Ed Warren, um, will will be the best person to to get advice because he he does you know, deal with that sort of thing. I, I prefer things like attachments and um, things like that, where people um, do this sort of thing. And if they're not in the right frame of mind, um, I believe they should stay well away from it. Um, I've had somebody that, that that I wouldn't let go out with us because they were such an anxious person. Um, oh, it's yeah. like people with Ouija boards. I believe a lot of it is um, us pushing the, 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 the glass and, and it's nothing paranormal happening because i blindfolded people like kieran o'keefe has done and it's just been gobbledygooch yeah. um but i but i believe that if you've got somebody in that circle that believes that the ouija board is dangerous let them stay away from it because the psychology right. psychological damage that can do to that person is tremendous so um i would say with demons uh the psychological um you've got to be careful people that that heavily believe in those sort of things and, and what it could do to them demons you know i don't know um it's um something that um a friend of mine who's uh, uh in the church he exercises demons and he believes really very much in them so um wow. again that's that's another and also i i'll quickly say this i went to um the middle east on my visits and they believe in the jinn which is like yes. a demon and they believe everything we see is the gin that's doing it, you know, and we should stay well away from the paranormal. So who knows? They could be right and we could be wrong. And, and you know, um, I, I say the jury's still out with me that, you know, yeah. it's, a, it's an interesting subject to gain, a totally different one. But I think that's where you've got to be careful and you, you've got to, um, I certainly don't want to frighten people when we talk about it. And if I think anyone's susceptible to that kind of thing, I'd say stay away from it. Yeah, that's right. A quick shout out to Vaughn and uh, Kathy Adams. Thanks for Hi. watching. Um, Lois says you're really, really interesting. Thank you. So, mm. Yeah, it's a really cool conversation. Really enjoyed it. Um, Kathy Adams, uh, she uses music on investigations to help liven things up. It really can. And, and the one I did play was Vera Lynn. And I oh, I've done that, yeah. I then joked with the team and said, I'm going to go and interview Vera Lynn. They said, never. They, somebody thought she had sadly died at the time because she was getting on. And I said, no, I'd love to, to, to interview her. And I said, what we could do, I said, is raise awareness to um, Dame Vera Lynn's children with cerebral palsy charity because that's something good that we can do whilst we're doing what we do. And I met D Dame Vera Lynn. I was in her home and she'd come to see me. And I told her about what I did and she had a little chuckle. She said, well, we'll meet again. She said, the ghosts like it. She said, I'm not surprised. She said, she said oh, because wow. everyone loves that song. And me and her had a, and she, me and her had a little sing-along. Uh, I oh, cherish right. that moment because she was wonderful. But every time I play that sort of music, it's quite emotional because you do, hey, I remember her. And I also feel that at that particular time in history, it would have been so meaningful for people that you know and any song really because we, we every song i mean i could name a song that's i cherish and so someone else could so that's right I, I think it's a very good thing to do when you, you do an investigation yeah it's a song for a whole nation at the time wasn't it yeah yeah and you know it's a great moment in time and it was you know when and you know i've used that on investigations as well yeah. and it sort of does help with the sort of atmosphere of the building when yeah, you know they would have celebrations and everything and dances at the time, wouldn't they? Yeah. So I've got a question. Um, Angela, I've be, been investigated, Mr. and Mrs. Warren. I said if they are real, give me a sign. Then the film came, that was a week ago. What do you think <laughs> to that? <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure what you mean there, Angela, but um, yeah. <laughs> um yeah, I, I, I mean, Ed and Lorraine Warren are, are no longer with us, and, and the film is done by the actors. So um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's so uh, it's people's interpretation, isn't it? Really? Yeah. So yeah, what what did you think of the Warrens? Because a lot of people slated them, things like that. Yeah, I don't 
I, I mean, I'm fr friends with Chris, and I find Chris um, a really a lovely guy. And um, Lorraine Warren sent me a message when I first started out investigating, and I've still got the message from her. Oh, lovely. And um, she said to me, always stay on the, the, the good side of this, always stay in the light, always stay on the right side. Remember that, and you'll go far, and um, stay away from the dark. And she was a real inspiration. And I think they, they, you know, I take people as I find them, and because I found them very genuine as yeah, people. That's I, right. it's, it's the same with Derek, you know, a lot of people would say well Derek was wrong on this or so and so was wrong on that or someone like that i found that i look at when i've met the people and then when i've met the people i realize that they're genuine people and yeah. um you know because they're genuine people i believe they 100 percent believe in what they do and um you know the media may be on them and sometimes the pressure may be too much so you know but i believe they believed in what they did and, and that they, they were great, great that's great right and they're groundbreaking as well yeah, you know, yeah. they did something a lot of people didn't want to accept. Well, I think also people have got to remember, remember the Annabelle movie is very different to the the, the story of Annabelle. And yeah. uh, Chris McKinnell's now talking about it and doing talks on it um, because I've got one of the relics of the real Annabelle in, 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 in here, you know, which you can easily get. It's... Um, I forget what they call it. It's a doll, something that you can buy. They're they're all over the states, yeah. and it was just, it was a raggedy doll. It's just one of those ordinary dolls, yeah. and, and um, it's not the the more scary one you see in the movies because that looks yeah. more frightening. To be honest, um, if I saw that by the side of the bed, I probably would start believing. But um, <laughs> no, I I think they were genuine. You know, I think they 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 were genuine what they did, and and you know, um, and I think the media is how they portray people. Um, yeah, that's right. Morris, Morris that did um, Enfield was a, a great guy as well. But again, he had the media attention and the media attention suddenly does change people's opinions of people. Um, I've been involved with the media and they've written things that I've never ever said, you know. Um, so I know how that can sometimes come out. Yeah, never... that's right, because they, w they want to sell things. and That's right, yeah. And yeah. that's it, they want the headlines, don't they? Yeah. So you sort of going somewhere, looking around, and nothing happening. Well, they actually want the story, don't they? They do, yeah. <laughs> uh, so here we go. Then this is from Michelle. So you've given your thoughts on demons, but no one ever talks about angels. My question is: Do you also believe in spiritual protection prior to an investigation? Are you, or are you a complete skeptic that doesn't believe in that? I would say I believe highly in people's well-being and the psychology and the ethics of what we do. So I've had to, I when I started doing what I did, I decided that I wanted to know it from all angles. So I went with a rescue group of mediums that were rescuing wow. um, people that had attachments. And I sat in on a rescue group and, and saw what they did. And I did that because I felt ethically if i'm going to claim to be not that i'm an, i don't believe in this paranormal expert but if i claim to be knowledgeable of it i at least need to know it from all angles you know not just from a skeptic point of view so if protection works in the mind of the people that are doing it do it you know i myself have my own protection um it's a um it's a bracelet that i always wear and wow. people may have seen the bracelet that i wear that is the bracelet i don't know if i can get it proper on the camera Oh, um, yeah. and that is um that is something i've always wore when i've gone out on investigations so psychologically even though i'm a skeptic um i do kind of feel i have something with me that that helps me because i don't completely understand what necessarily is going on with these things um but i you know i i i, I think if it helps yeah fine it's not a problem um i find i i mean i guess as a skeptic I like science and I do find it hard to believe that when the body dies and everything's died that we do actually go on. But I think a lot of people find that hard to grasp, you know, um, yeah. if we're honest about it, you know, um, we all find it because scientifically, but I know that science ignores a lot of the things that we do and, and don't want to, don't want to take notice of it. And to me, sometimes that's not very scientific, you know, because you should be open <laughs> to learn and look at other yeah. things. Um, if I've got something, mysteriously moving in an area where no one else can move it then i think we need to look at that and say what on earth's going on there you know uh, yeah. what is happening 
Yeah, it's because it can't be quantified in some way. Yeah. It's showing someone's story, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you know, and, and to really scientifically to explain it, the scientist needs to be there. Yeah. So yeah. check all the options themselves. I think there's a there's a snobbery and an embarrassment in the field that, that some people feel that you know to talk about hocus pocus they call it you know talk about these things yeah. even though i'm research ghost stories i said to somebody i do ghost stories and i just get people's beliefs which everyone's got beliefs they all say well hocus pocus i said well that's not hocus pocus these people believe in these things you know it's their yeah. belief you know um so so yeah yeah but there's so many stories and you know you get different people coming out with the same stories you do yeah, yeah. as well so you know, you can't prove it, but it's just odd how, you know, independent people can come out, come out with something similar. Well, in and, India, they really believe in this and they, they, they stay well away from it because they really yeah. believe that, you know, if they go out at night that they can easily um, come home with an attachment of a spirit. And they, they really believe sincerely in sort of certain parts of India, I mean, um, yeah. uh, more so than we do over here sometimes. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's good to get all the different cultures together and see what their beliefs are and see how it all ties together and, and where this comes from you know yeah um, it's interesting uh jane says science ignores the spirituality side of things which has been around for thousands of years which, well that's it jane yeah. I, I you know i i, I think i um, mean i have my own spiritual beliefs my own personal beliefs so even i say i'm skeptical i mean i'm skeptical in the sense that you know, I don't want to put everything down to, to, to be ghosts or paranormal, but my own beliefs are personal to me, and I do have other beliefs that are personal, you know, so... Um, yeah. And, and I believe they're just, there's something between me and, and whatever, so, yeah. Yeah, it, it's been a really great um, conversation. Thank you. Thanks for that. Um, um, I'll just go with this for a moment. Um, Wes said... Wait a minute, I find it. Oh, dear. And you've got comments, and all of a sudden the shoot up. So Wes would like to get to know you better. He likes the way that you think. Yeah. So Wes is in Canada. Um, Kathy Adams says, make sure you have breakfast at Apple Cross when you go to Scotland. Definitely Fish and will. chips at Eileen Donan Castle. Uh, I definitely will. That sounds really nice. The fish and yeah, chips. Yeah, it does because it's yeah. just a beautiful place. I've, yeah. been, I've been inside it. I just, you know, I do love it. And yeah, I'm going in September and I hope to see it again. Um, Shell Buckley wants to thank you for the answer. Um, what if there's no actual ghosts and spirits, but we actually live in one of many parallel universes? Well, there, there's always that possibility. And, and yeah. Again, that, there's, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's crazy, though, isn't it? It's, the mind it's boggles. a field where you just yeah. get too many questions. Yeah. You get more questions than answers, you know? Yeah, definitely. that's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, if anyone wants to find me, they can find me at, um, on Twitter um at the real richard case i think it is now i've got my twitter handle right or right. um www.theghostchanger.co.uk or on facebook as jacqueline knows i've got yeah. my facebook um which is my ordinary facebook is more where i do a lot of the stuff rather than a page but they can look yeah. up richard if they put richard case the ghost challenger then then i can add people not a problem yeah what i'll do is try and uh, share the twitter link on lovely Thank onto you. this onto the top of the feed onto the initial description and also a contact to your page as well thank but you. thank you so much for your time it's been absolutely Lovely. fantastic thank you and um, thank you for everyone who's watched as well thanks for your brilliant questions and look after yourself everyone okay then cheers bye